SpaceX has officially begun its first major tests at Launch Pad 2, a clear signal that this new site could be ready for action as early as this month. If that happens, we could even see a Starship version 3 launch before the year is over, a real turning point as the technology gears up for the ambitious plans heading into 2026. So, what exactly did SpaceX just test? And why is it such a big deal? Let's dive into today's episode of Alpha Tech. Over the past month, Pad 2 at Starbase has been making some serious progress, thanks to direct oversight from SpaceX leadership. It looks like they're racing to get everything ready for a big milestone, the official opening and activation of Pad 2. Things ramped up even faster last week, with the pad getting a series of upgrades and tests, from adding new water tanks to the Deluge farm, to small-scale checks of the water Deluge system, and even extended tests of the BQD arm at the OLM. But what really caught people's attention was the latest important test, the Flame Trench Trial. On September 13th, SpaceX activated the Flame Trench system at Pad 2. Observers spotted a controlled spray of water shooting into the trench, confirming that the long-awaited deluge system was finally up and running. The event came just a few days after new water tanks were added, tanks that provide the huge amount of water needed to counteract the immense thrust of Starship Version 3 the very rocket set to launch from this pad. Looking at the small spray of water, it's clear the system wasn't running at full power during this initial test. They were likely just checking for blockages or any issues in the water flow. Unlike Pad 1, where a steel cooling plate creates a powerful reverse flow, Pad 2's flame trench disperses water in a very different way. To put it in perspective, compare it to NASA's Kennedy Space Center, during their water deluge tests, water columns shoot up as high as a building, a far cry from how Pad 2's system operates for now. But eventually, Pad 2's flame trench is expected to function in much the same way. That means we can expect stronger activations soon, especially with Pad 2 slated to be fully operational by the end of this year, likely sometime in October. To see it in action for the first time, we'll have to wait until SpaceX rolls Super Heavy 18, or booster 18, out to pad 2 for a pair of static fires. That's when we'll really find out if SpaceX's new cooling system can handle the massive 9,240 tons of thrust from the company's 33 most advanced Raptor 3 engines. In other words, we'll soon witness two incredible things in a single test, the raw power of Super Heavy version 3 and the effectiveness of the flame trench. So, are you excited for this epic test? Drop a Go Starship in the comments. Overall, SpaceX's Flame Trench system at Pad 2 is an impressive engineering achievement. While not a completely new design, it's incredibly effective, built to handle the colossal thrust of the Super Heavy booster, a whopping 9,240 tons of force, as I just mentioned. That's far beyond any rocket ever built. Even NASA's legendary Saturn Fiki, which produced around 3,500 tons of thrust. This immense force doesn't just generate mechanical stress, it also produces heat and energy equivalent to a small volcanic eruption. To manage it, Pad 2's flame trench features a dual trench design paired with an advanced water deluge system to absorb, cool, and redirect that energy. The high pressure water, often called the deluge system, not only lowers temperatures but also dampens the sonic shock waves, protecting both the launch mount and surrounding areas from damage. In fact, SpaceX had already installed and tested an initial flame trench system at the Massey site. But, compared to that scale, Pad 2's trench is a major upgrade in both size and effectiveness. At Massey, they tested a single trench system mainly to evaluate the durability of early designs. Pad 2, however, was built with long-term operations in mind, not just for a single launch, but to withstand hundreds, even thousands of launches over time. The dual trench design helps distribute energy more efficiently, minimizing the risk of corrosion or structural damage from repeated heat and pressure. After all, as Elon Musk envisions producing up to 1,000 starships per year, the launch cadence will increase dramatically. Only a system like Pad 2's Flame Trench can handle such an extreme workload. The current steel cooling system at Pad 1 simply wouldn't be up to the task. So, what about Pad 1? It's now down to just one final flight. Starship Flight 11, before its roll starts winding down. If all goes smoothly, we could see Starship Flight 11 take off by the end of this month or early October. 
This mission is a major milestone, marking the end of the Block 2 era for the Starship Super Heavy system. It also means that Ship 38 and Booster 15 will be the final Version 2 vehicles launched from Starbase. Designed primarily to support Starship Version 2 rockets, Pad 1 has hosted 10 test flights since 2023. Witnessing both setbacks, like the foundation damage during Flight 1, and successes, such as booster recoveries and more recent launches. However, once Flight 11 is complete and critical data is analyzed, SpaceX will fully dismantle Pad 1, removing the old donut-style supports and other outdated structures no longer compatible with Version 3 requirements. Following that, Pad 1 will undergo a comprehensive upgrade, focused on redesigning the flame trench along the lines of Pad 2, which is better optimized to handle the immense thrust of the next-generation Super Heavy Booster. New support systems will be integrated to accommodate larger vehicles, increased fuel capacity, and improved reusability of Block 3 spacecraft, with the goal of increasing launch cadence and supporting full orbital missions from 2026 onward. This upgrade process, expected to begin right after Flight 11 data is analyzed, may take several weeks, temporarily putting Pad 1 out of action while engineers get to work. During this time, Pad 2 will take over upcoming launches like Flight 12 with Booster 18 and Ship 39, marking a strategic shift by SpaceX toward mass production and more ambitious space missions. Once upgraded, Pad 1 will become an advanced launch site, featuring Mechazilla arms, SQD, BQD, OLM, a fully integrated flame trench, and complete piping systems. The renovation is expected to last at least six months, preparing the pad for the Block 3 era set to ramp up next year. By then, we'll have three active launch pads for Starship Version 3, two at Starbase, and one at LC-39A, and Starship flights could soon become as frequent and busy as Falcon 9 launches. Speaking of LC-39A, SpaceX is currently building a massive Gigabay, a giant Starship factory optimized to handle vehicles up to 266 feet, or 81 meters tall. The facility will feature 24 dedicated work bays for integration, assembly, and refurbishment, along with cranes capable of lifting up to 400 tons. That's over 11 times the workspace of the megabays at Starbase in Texas, and double the lifting capacity. Because of its scale, the factory will take some time to become fully operational. In the meantime, starships will still need to be transported from Starbase, Texas. And yes, this will almost certainly be done by sea. Elon Musk even hinted at a new drone ship dedicated to this task. In a recent comment, he said, Watership to transport spaceship from Starbase to Cape Canaveral. So the new drone ship will be named You'll Thank Me Later, adding yet another uniquely named vessel to Elon Musk's growing fleet. SpaceX is famous for giving its ships and rockets names inspired by science fiction. For example, the Florida-based autonomous drone ships, a shortfall of Gravitas and Just Read the Instructions, are named after spacecraft from Ian M. Banks' sci-fi novels. SpaceX hasn't responded to requests for more details, but even a few brief comments from Musk are enough to stir excitement across the space community. Back at Starbase, testing is running at full speed, and for good reason. SpaceX is accelerating hardware tests for version 3 to hit key milestones, like the orbital refilling system. B-18, the first prototype of the new version, is nearly complete and expected to begin testing soon. Its counterpart, S-39, is also approaching readiness and will soon be stacked. Vehicles and infrastructure need to move in sync, and SpaceX is clearly working hard to keep both aligned with its ambitious timeline. The launch of version 3 won't just be a small step forward, it represents a decisive leap. Musk has described the redesign as radical, with nearly every aspect of the rocket upgraded or modified. Such a scale of change demands infrastructure to evolve alongside it. Pad 2 isn't just a launch pad, it's a platform built to handle greater thrust, heavier loads, and more frequent flights. The question is no longer whether Pad 2 is ready, it's how quickly it can prove itself. In the coming weeks, the water cooling system could be unleashed at full force, the flame trench pushed to its limits, and all critical pad systems validated in final tests. Each trial brings SpaceX one step closer to unlocking the full potential of Starship version 3. But 
Pad 2 is more than just an engineering achievement. Its emergence reflects SpaceX's philosophy of continuous iteration and bold design. Just as the rocket itself evolves through testing and refinement, the supporting infrastructure does too. Pad 2 isn't just a step forward for Starbase. It's a template for the global Starship network that SpaceX envisions. And right now, that vision is coming to life. The launch site is buzzing with activity. Vehicles are nearing completion, and the first radical version of Starship is almost ready to fly. With Pad 2 by its side, version 3 is poised to usher in a new era for the program. The countdown to that future has begun, and the world is about to witness what this new combination of rocket and launch pad can achieve. Version 3 is approaching, carrying one of the most significant leaps in Starship's development yet. Musk has emphasized that this version is a complete ground-up redesign, sparking tremendous anticipation across the aerospace community. Over the past year, a steady stream of upgrades has been revealed, each pointing toward the future of a next-generation, fully reusable launch system. In recent weeks, new details have emerged from the Star Factory production site, highlighting the extent of the changes coming with Starship version 3. Images reveal a columnar tank with a nose unlike anything seen before. The top resembles previous header tanks, but the column appears smaller than a standard main tank, suggesting this could be a new type of forward tank designed specifically for the ship. If that's the case, it would be a breakthrough compared to the current round header tanks. Suspended by 5-ton cables, this component is fairly compact, yet it signals a major step forward in refining Starship's performance. Another newly spotted component adds to the intrigue. Installed at the tail of the prototypes, this larger tank weighs roughly 10,000 pounds, about 4.5 tons. Its increased size indicates that SpaceX is continuing to push the limits of Starship's capacity and efficiency. Every modification points toward a vehicle that's not only more powerful, but also more versatile in its mission capabilities. In short, these upgrades showcase SpaceX's relentless drive to optimize every aspect of Starship. The debut of version 3 later this year will mark the start of a new era for the program, one defined by radical redesigns and bold ambition. The only question now is, is the world ready for the most advanced Starship yet?